Welcome to the LLM mini series part two. Today, I am going to present to you the very exciting use case of parallel multi document question answering using tools like Llama Index and Langchain in combination with large language models provided by OpenAI to tackle that particular use case. So just for a moment, let's imagine we are a human resources recruiter with a specific jobs vacancy and we would like to find the most suitable candidate fitting the most to this particular job offer. And we have collected so far three to 20 different uh, curriculum BD documents and also maybe from social media, we have obtained content from LinkedIn about the candidate profiles. And instead of reading each and every document sequentially to its full extent to screen for the information we are looking for, we would like to ask all of the document sources in parallel. So to get all the answers in parallel, to be able to compare directly the answers, to cluster them according how similar are they, how distinct are the um, answers, and also maybe how the information units we are looking for are linked together across candidates. How are we going to accomplish this task? We are making use of an approach called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or HE. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take the documents and split it into smaller chunks of text. And for each of those chunks, we are computing a vector representation with a large language model, a so-called embedding. And this is then serving as an indexed knowledge base on which we can base the actual query, the actual prompt to the large language model. So in the querying stage, we would have our query first enter a semantic search retrieval pipeline and the semantic search retrieval pipeline by means of approximate nearest neighbor search would then filter the relevant um, chunks which are relevant for answering the question. So instead of having all the documents, we just take those chunks which are the most relevant for answering um, the question. And then we combine the original query with this context from the documents uh, in which the answers are contained and would, based on the prompt template, instruct the language model to generate an answer which should be based on the context of those relevant ch In the multi-index use case, instead of just having a single index, we have independent indices and query engines for each and every document in parallel. So the initial question is split into um, questions, queries for each and every indexing pipeline and query engine. So in parallel, and um, we have basically the most relevant chunks uh, extracted for each of the indices and have a response synthesized for each of the indices. Afterwards, the multi-index query engine takes the responses from all the indices and creates a final uh, prompt template, which is then sent as a, a query to the large language model response synthesizer to generate a final answer, which is based on all the indices. Time to dive into the actual code of the application. For this demo purpose, I have created a very simple Streamlit application. Let's have a look in the Streamlit app. At the first step, we are loading a simple config object. And the config object has the purpose of configuring the specific parameters of the Streamlit application. Let's have a look in the config. We can, for example, select the specific large language model to be used for the response synthesis. And in this case, we're using a smaller kind of model, uh, which is much cheaper from OpenAI. It's a DaVinci model. We can set the temperature to um, zero. If we have low temperature, this means we have um, more deterministic response generation. If we have higher temperature, it's more explorative. Also, as I said, we have to chunk the large text document into smaller pieces of text and can define the chunk size. 
For the retrieval step, we can define how many um, most relevant chunks should be returned and included as a context. We can also configure the prompt and um, we will use later on for some analytical purposes also a center transformer model with which we can compute the semantic similarity of two texts. So now let's again jump into the app. We've now loaded the general config object for the overall application. And uh, that has a very important part for Llama index. We have to load and specify a context loader. Um, here we are initializing the API wrapper, in our case for the OpenAI Large Language Model API. We have to initialize the embedding model for the indexing part, computing vector representations for each of the document chunks. We have to initialize node parser, which takes a huge block of text and um, splits it up into smaller chunks. And also set some parameters for the prompting response synthesis uh, part and provide everything as an initialized service context. Let's go back to the app. From a um, post processing perspective and also analytics perspective, we also need a sentence transformer model for computing semantic similarity, um, which I will refer to later on. And uh, from an app perspective, uh, we define a file loader so we can upload via drag and drop our the file explorer some PDF files. Next, we are loading the texts from those PDF files using PyMoon PDF and um, creating, first of all, a multi-index for those um, individual PDF files. So let's jump into the multi-index. We are iterating through each of the files, the content of the files, and create documents out of the content. And we are initializing first an index based on the documents, which is computing the embeddings uh, for each of the document chunks, for each of the nodes. And um, then we are initializing based on the uh, index uh, a query engine for each of the documents. And for all of the documents, for all of the indices, we are combining them into a list of query engine tools with each individual engine per document. And we initialize a multi-index sub-question query engine uh, on top of all those individual indices. We're executing the actual query with our query executor. So we take the text input from the Streamlit app, and if the OK button has been clicked, then we make a query via our sub-query engine, the multi-index query engine to print basically the raw result and um, we can form it nicely as a data frame and perform some cluster analysis on the response objects for each individual index and if um, it's a special query about some skills um, then we also visualize a network uh, graph uh, based on the relationships between the skills of different applicants have a look at the actual Streamlit application. First, we need to upload some files. And for this purpose, we are going to upload some uh, PDF uh, document-based curriculum VD documents. So now let's have a look here at the search bar. We can just um, type something, for example, compare the soft skills of data scientists one, two, and three and click on OK. And now um, we will send a query to the multi-index query and, and we can see here already the raw result. Um, and you see uh, basically the summary uh, across all indices. We see here mentioned data scientist 1, um, data scientist 2 and data scientist 3 with their respective soft skills. And we have information about uh, what all data scientists have in common and also maybe how data centers one and three are distinct with regards to their leadership and time management skills. And uh, we can see summarized basically in the data frame uh, also the individual responses per index uh, for data scientists one, two and three. 
And basically what we do next is we use the center transformer model to compute embeddings again for semantic uh, meaning of the individual responses. And we perform some cluster analysis and we can see that indeed data scientists one and three, the responses, so their soft skills tend to be more similar to each other compared to data scientist two. And we see the same thing if we compute the cosine similarity score of the similarity of the extracted responses from data scientists one, two, and three. But if you want to compare that in detail, uh, what we do next is we split the soft skills into a list of soft skills. Um, and then we um, have basically a knowledge base, which is the European skills and competencies knowledge base. Um, so where we have standardized skill descriptions and we find for each of the skills for data scientists one, two and three, we find the most similar standardized European skill and competency skill. And then we compare the skills of the data scientists and uh, identify which ones are overlapping and uh, create a graph out of it. So let's have a look at the graph. We can see that data scientists one and three share the most common nodes and they have the most skills in common while data scientists two has less skills in common to data scientists one and three. So we can gain analytical insights about those data scientists. We can ask any question and give any instruction um, to the um, multi-index query engine. So maybe let's now compare the awards of data scientist one, two, and three, and just send. Let's have a look at the response here. Uh, we will directly jump into the responses for each individual index. And we will see here, Anna Mustermann does not have any rewards listed in the context information provided. Data Scientist 2 does not have any awards listed in the context information, but Max Mustermann has the award, first place annual computer science programming competition and some outstanding accomplishments in other um, competitions. So we can see clearly that if the LLM doesn't know the answer, with this retrieval augmented generation, um, we get instead stated by the LLM instead of an hallucinated answer that um, no information is provided in the context, hence the LLM cannot answer to the question.